Hello there and welcome back my friends, welcome back to another video. In this video we are taking another look at fish that you can put into your aquarium to eat algae instead of a pleco. There are many fish on this list, I've already done one video on this subject, but there were some that I missed so here is volume 2. Whenever you're looking for a fish to eat algae in your aquarium, there is one fish that is always thrust upon you, always given to you as the ultimate solution to all of your algae problems, and that is the common pleco. And the reason for this is because they're just so ingrained in the aquatic industry to eat algae. The thing about this is common plecos are probably one of the least suitable fish for most people's aquariums in the hobby. Common plecos get huge, and I've been reliably informed that they can get up to three to four feet in length, in some cases, a little bit bigger. So of course, a three to four foot catfish is not particularly suitable for most people's aquariums, unless you've got a very large aquarium indeed, and not everybody does. Unfortunately, in the shops, when you go in for an algae eater, you'll generally just be given a pleco. Another issue with plecos is when they're small, they're actually quite good at eating algae, but as they grow, they lose the desire to eat so much algae and they actually create a lot of waste from their rear end. So they're not the best fish to have in your fish tank. So this video is my second volume of fish that you can add to your aquarium to eat a bit of algae. I'm going to go through their pros and cons and how they compare to adding a pleco to your aquarium. First up, it's arguably one of the best algae eaters in the business and that is the Siamese algae eater. Now there are two very similar looking fish on the market that go under a very similar name. You have the Siamese algae eater and you have the flying fox. They look very similar but there are subtle differences to tell the difference. In this case you want the Siamese algae eater, the Latin name being Crossochelus oblongus. So why are they so good? Well they are non-stop at eating algae. That is pretty much their entire diet. Um, if they run out of algae they'll start eating plants so that's something you're going to want to take into consideration but they will eat hair algae and they will eat dust algae, brown algae, whatever you want they're going to eat it and the good thing is is they'll go around the entire tank and eat it from pretty much every surface including the plant leaves, ornaments and sometimes even the glass. Siamese algae eaters do get reasonably large, up to about 6 inches, so they need a decent sized aquarium to go into, and they also can be kept in groups because they're quite social, or you can keep them alone. Siamese algae eaters are great additions to most aquariums. You're going to need at least 20 gallons for them though because of the size they get to, so not good for the smaller fish tank. And with that in mind, I'm going to give them a 5 out of 5 placosity rating. The next fish that you see all over the place sold for eating algae in your aquarium is called the sucking loach. There's a few colorations of this fish available, namely the standard color and the golden color, but sometimes you get albinos as well. Sucking loaches are pretty much a Jekyll and Hyde fish because when they're young, they are absolutely incredible at eating algae. So they're one of these fish that you buy it for algae, they do the job and you're well chuffed with it. However, as they get bigger, and when we say bigger, they can get up to around 20 centimeters at their most, they can kind of lay off eating algae and they start turning towards more carnivorous diet and they end up eating more in the way of your flake food, your pellet food and if they don't get enough of that they can sometimes harass fish and try and eat the slime coat from your fish and this can be seen quite commonly in tanks with slower moving fish like fancy goldfish. And because they have this dual nature to them I'm going to give them a placosity rating of 3 out of 5. Is it a twig? No, it is a whiptail catfish and that's the next fish I'm going to be talking about. Whiptail catfish are very similar to placos in the fact that they eat in a very similar way having a rasping mouthpiece. However, they are firstly very very beautiful and very different in the way they look and secondly they don't get as big as common plex. However, they do get quite thin and long, but they don't have that same bulk as a common plex does. By nature, they are very peaceful. There are many different species of whiptail catfish available, and because of this, it means that there's a whiptail catfish for pretty much every aquarium. They are actually reasonably good at eating algae. They will eat other things like meatier foods and pellets and flakes, but in their spare time, they'll go around and they'll eat a bit of algae for you, and they'll eat it off of all of the surfaces, including decor, glass, and also the substrate. 
So whiptail catfish look amazing. However, they're not the best algae eaters available. I'm gonna give them a two out of five on the plecosity rating. Hillstream loaches are one of these fish that used to be incredibly rare and hard to get hold of, but now the market is flooded with them. Pretty much every shop you go into has a variety of Hillstream loach. And there's a good reason for this. They are amazing algae eaters. They do require quite fast flowing water and well oxygenated water as well, because that's the environment they come from, but they are cool looking fish and also don't get too big, so they can be kept in smaller aquariums. They're incredibly well suctioned to the glass. If you ever try to catch one of these, you'll know how hard it is to unstick them. Their day is spent scooching around the tank, looking for morsels of algae to scrape off with their mouth parts, and they are just a little character within your aquarium. So as long as you meet a Hillstream loach's environmental needs, they make really, really good algae eaters for aquariums especially in those smaller tanks where larger algae eaters won't fit. This earns the Hillstream Loach a 4 out of 5 on the Placosity rating. This mustachioed fellow is a bristlenose catfish. These are often mistaken as a pleco because they do look very similar to a pleco to the untrained eye, especially when they're small. However, they're very easy to tell the difference because they have a white flash on their tail and they tend to be polka dotted rather than sort of camos that plecos have. And Sistrus catfish are very similar in a lot of ways to Placostomus, but they have some redeeming features. The first one being they don't get anywhere nearly as big as a Placostomus. The biggest Ancestrus I've ever seen was about 8 inches, and I've never seen one that big again. And this means that they are way more suitable for a wider variety of sizes of aquarium. Another thing about Ancestrus which makes them so great is the fact that they never stop eating algae. Even as they get big, their diet remains very similar and they will constantly go around your aquarium eating algae, keeping your tank clean and doing the job that you bought them for. So with that being said, I'm going to give the Ancestrus, the bristlenose pleco, a 5 out of 5 on the plecosity rating. Now last on my list is a fish that you'll probably already have in your aquarium um, and that is the live bearer. Although they will eat meaty foods if you offer it to them, they generally are herbivores. If you look at a live bearer, if you look at a molly or you look at a guppy, they do spend a lot of their time going around the surfaces of your aquarium rasping at the dusty algae in your tank. Although they're not that great at actually eating the filamentous algae, the hair algae, they do actually do quite a good job at clearing up that dusty green algae on all the surfaces in your fish tank. So this makes them really good fish to have in an aquarium as a helper cleaner fish, especially mollies. Mollies are actually really good at eating algae and they can be excellent in tanks where you need a dither fish, but you want a dither fish that will um, also contribute to the cleanliness of the tank. Another thing you'll notice is if you've got quite a big um, community aquarium with live bearers in there mixed in amongst everyone else, as your live bearers die back, your algae will actually increase a lot of the time. And that's because the live bearers are doing an unknown, unrecognized job of eating that algae from your aquarium. So although they're not a completely recognized algae eating fish, I'm gonna give them a shout out in this video. Live bearers do do their part when it comes to eating algae in your aquarium. And because of this, I'm gonna give them only a one out of five on the Picosity rating. So that's my second video on fish that you should add to your aquarium instead of a common pleco. Now, if you haven't seen my first video on this, I'll put a link down in the description. It's got other fish that do the same things that I've already been talking about, i.e. eat algae. Who knew there were so many different species of fish that you could add instead of a pleco? Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on the pleco. They have their place in the aquarium hobby. Um, for big aquariums, I'm talking huge aquariums, they're great algae eaters, but they are often missold. And a lot of the time as well, in some countries they are released into the wild. And there's some parts of the world now, uh, especially in parts of America that are overrun with common plecos. They're destroying a lot of unique ecosystems because they just overgraze, they overbreed. So it's one of these things that um, should be more heavily controlled really in the aquarium hobby. They shouldn't just be freely sold to everybody. Uh, there should be a bit more common sense when it comes to selling a common pleco. 
So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it has enlightened you a little bit on fish that you can add to your aquarium sweet algae. If you have liked it, please leave a like below. It does really help me get promoted on YouTube. It helps the algorithm discover my video and share it to other people. Also, if you're not a subscriber and you've enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to my channel as well. And then you'll see me release more content on my channel. And if you hit the bell button, you'll also get a notification. So make sure you do that as well. So once again, thank you for watching and happy fish keeping.